everyone, on behalf of all the members of the board, the staff and myself, welcome to CATAS. CATAS is the largest European laboratory for wood and furniture industry. So we work in all other sectors of manufacturing as well. Today, we are opening uh, the doors of our laboratory to introduce you in the world of the testing, certification and research. You will be guided by our experts who embody the true patrimony of our institute, the experience gained in over 50 years of operation. Enjoy your virtual journey CATAS started in 1969. That year was very important, not only for us, but also for the rest of the world. It's the year of the first man on the moon, but it's also the year when all this story started. We started as a, a very little lab with two people, one machine, and with a lot of enthusiasm in order to achieve and to perform what was on those days the needed test methods to qualify the uh, performance of the seating. The idea was quite successful. Things evolved quite rapidly. So at the beginning of the 21th century, CATAS was the most important test lab for furniture in Italy. As the year went on, also the number of employees of CATAS increased, and this allowed us also to deal with other kinds of testing in order to provide a high level of service to the furniture industry and the related components. Welcome. My name is Andrea Javon. I'm the Managing Director of CATAS. And now I would like to introduce Franco Bullian and I would like to ask him, what is CATAS today now, Franco? Thank you, Andrea, and welcome to CATAS also from my side. Uh, CATAS uh, is the biggest European laboratory uh, for the uh, wood and furniture sector. Just to give you a picture of the institute, I can uh, use some numbers. Two is the number of sites. One is this one in uh, San Giovanni Altisone and the other one is in Lissone, close to Milano. 57 is the number of employees. 2,000 is the number of uh, uh, clients we have all over the world in the uh, four continents. And uh, uh, finally, uh, 50,000 is the number of tests we carry out uh, every year. So at this point, I think it's good to start our trip inside our laboratories. Here we are in building uh, D, uh, the heart of the biological and chemical activities of CATAS. During our trip, uh, we will uh, visit our five departments. This one, the chemical and biological department, then the uh, mechanical department, the file department, the surface department, and finally, the finished product department where we test chairs, desks, cabinets, and so on. So uh, let's start and please follow me. So this is the first step uh, of our trip in the uh, chemical laboratory. And here we are in the um, gas chromatographic uh, section. Uh, together with me, uh, we have uh, uh, Stefano Ciroi, our expert in gas chromatography. So, uh, Stefano, please, can you tell us uh, uh, what is this uh, uh, complex name, gas chromatography? What do we do here? If I have to explain um, uh, what chromatography is in a few words, uh, I can tell you that uh, chromatography is a technique that uh, is useful to separate what someone else or the nature had put together. So our job is to 
carry out qualitative and quantitative analysis to understand the composition of the raw materials, semi-finished products or finished products, like adhesives, paints, varnishes, plastics. As you told before, in this room we have a lot of gas chromatographs. Each one is equipped with a different detector. We have flame ionization detectors, electron capture detector and mass spectrometer detector. Each one is dedicated to a particular analysis. We search the presence of some dangerous substances like plasticizers in plastics or monomer, free monomers in layers, some prohibited preservatives of wood like pentachlorophenol. Last but not less important, we evaluate the emission of volatile organic compounds from finished materials. And thank you very much for this clear thank and exhaustive too. explanation. Uh, of course, if you have any question, any curiosity uh, about uh, this uh, technique or about standards and law regulating this uh, sector, you can directly contact uh, Stefano. Uh, but now it's time to move on and to visit the other uh, laboratories of the chemical department. Now we are in the second laboratory of the chemical department and uh, it's a pleasure for me to introduce uh, my friend Roberto. Uh, Roberto Battaglia is a chemist and he has a wide experience in many different uh, analytical techniques uh, like uh, X-ray fluorescence, like uh, thermal analysis and like uh, uh, infrared spectroscopy. So, Roberto, uh, I see you are working on uh, uh, this uh, uh, analytical technique. What, what is useful for? This is useful for uh, getting a, a sort of uh, a picture of the chemical composition of the material. And uh, uh, in this moment, I see you are analyzing uh, uh, some uh, samples. What, what are you doing? I'm analyzing the adhesive layer of some uh, uh, coating films. And uh, uh, we can see on the screen uh, some uh, uh, peaks, some uh, different peaks. What, what do they represent? The peaks are related to the chemical groups present in the materials. So different uh, peaks means different uh, chemical groups. Okay, so we can derive that uh, the samples, they have a different composition because the infrared spectra are different too. Yes, correct. Okay, so thank you, Roberto. And uh, now it's time to go to, the, to visit the rest of the chemical laboratory. As you have seen, our chemical department is equipped with many different type of uh, analytical techniques with which we carry out uh, specific uh, tests, specific analysis, but we can also do research activities or defect investigations. Uh, here we are in the laboratory for the analysis of heavy metals and together with me uh, there is Flaviano Colavini who is expert in this kind of tests. And so, uh, Flaviano, can you tell us uh, uh, which kind of tests uh, do you uh, carry out here and, and why? Yes, Franco. This laboratory is um, actually the laboratory in which we do the analysis of heavy metals so that we make uh, digestions before analysis and then we have two important instruments to make this kind of analysis, anatomic absorption and ICP instrument. Actually, we do analysis on different kinds of materials, in particular furniture. Uh, the metals are present to make the materials more testing, more valuable. We can do analysis on coatings, on surfaces, on uh, metals uh, that can contain heavy metals that are dangerous. And uh, for what I know, this is a type of analysis that is uh, requested a lot. Yes, it is, because we do uh, 50 to 60 analysis on single material per week. So, so uh, thank you very much, uh, Flaviano, for your uh, kind uh, explanation of uh, this kind of analysis. And now it's time to uh, go to, to visit the rest of our laboratory. So please follow me.
Ciao Elena. Hi Franco. Hi Elena. I'm disturbing you? No, no, not at all. I was uh, setting up some tests uh, to determine the antibacterial properties of surfaces. You know that in the current scenario it is, there is a growing concern about the possibility that uh, infections are spread uh, through contact uh, with uh, infected uh, surfaces. So we have these materials uh, which show antibacterial properties or antiviral properties even but we don't deal with antiviral, only with antibacterial. Yes, the virus are completely different Completely from, different from organisms and, yeah. and we are not allowed to manipulate the viruses yeah, in this course, environment. Yeah. Yes. And w w what uh, material do you test uh, here and uh, for what uh, purpose? Purpose? Well, um, mainly uh, we do tests on wood. Uh, to test uh, the efficacy of wood preservatives, uh, yeah. for instance, uh, that are used to increase the durability of wood uh, in use. You, you always mean biological durability, Biological durability, yeah. which means uh, the resistance to attack against uh, fungi, insects uh, and uh, uh, organisms yeah. in, uh, yeah. in living general. Organism. Yes. Living mm. organisms. And also the natural durability of wood, which is an important feature when you have to select a species or another, depending on what your end use. And then we, we can do uh, identification of wood species uh, through microscopic analysis of uh, wood slices. And uh, we used uh, anatomical features of wood uh, to uh, follow uh, identification keys uh, that lead uh, to uh, the genus or the species of wood that we are looking at. So you can precisely identify, for example, if uh, a piece of wood is pine, spruce or whatever yes, other wood species? Yes, quite yeah. easily for the most uh, uh, common species, uh, less easily if, if there are rare species, because in that case uh, you uh, can't always get to the target uh, species. You can stop uh, to genus or families, but quite close to identifying the, the, the wood, yes. So, uh, Elena, thank you very much for this uh, uh, clear explanation what you do here with your friends, little friends. Yes, <laughs> yes, they are, indeed. <laughs> so, thank you again. You're welcome. Bye. Bye, bye. Daniele, now we are going to visit a particular uh, laboratory of the chemical department is the place where we test emissions. Uh, we have here uh, five people dedicated to this subject, so uh, why emissions are so important for the furniture sector? Well, Franco, the emission has become during the year very important in the furniture sector because the market wants to reach a very high quality standard into indoor air. When we speak about emission or indoor quality air, we can divide it into two big categories, release and emission of formaldehyde or release and emission of volatile organic compounds. It's possible to find formaldehyde into indoor air because the formaldehyde is continuously released from the wood based panel by the thermosetting resins of the wood based panel. Or the formaldehyde is, is, is a, a dangerous substance. Obviously, the formaldehyde is a very dangerous substance, also carcinogenic. So, has been, uh, has been limited its use both in its use itself or like an emission of formaldehyde from the furniture. And, but you mentioned also that uh, apart from formaldehyde, also VOC, volatile organic compounds, are uh, dangerous for, for human beings. Yeah, volatile organic compounds are also dangerous, are present uh, in the basis of a lot of household products like paint, varnish, or hobby products. And also in this case, the volatile organic compound may have short or long-term adverse effect on human health. So also in this case, the market wants a low emission of volatile organic compounds. And so what are the, the, the methods we use here to, to, to test such emissions from ADI and VOC? 
In this department, we carry out three different tests. A chamber method, that is a reference method for raw material, for coated material, or for completed article as well. And we carry out also a two short test, only for formaldehyde, this is a perforator test that you can see in your right, or gas analyze test. This is, I think, a, a test to, to analyze the content of formaldehyde. Absolutely. When we speak about formaldehyde, we can divide the test into determination of content of formaldehyde or determination of emission on formaldehyde. In this case, perforator is a specific test for the content of formaldehyde only in raw material, like particle board or fiber board. And uh, we can go to see also the gas analysis, of course, just uh, uh, around the corner here. And you said that this is uh, um, also a, a quick and, and a cheap method to analyze uh, the, the formaldehyde uh, emission from wood-based panels. Yes, in this case uh, we can see a gas analyze method that is a specific test for coated material or for plywood material. Also in this case the test is very short. Uh, the test lasts only four hours and this is very important for the company has the result in the short time because the company need to know absolutely if uh, its material are complying or not. And you said that uh, in any case the reference method is the chamber method. Yeah. And uh, uh, we need to go to the other uh, uh, room to, to see the, the chambers. Yeah, the chamber method is a big apparatus, is a big climatic room, so we have the chamber in another part of laboratory. Can we go there? Yeah. yeah. So please come on and follow us. So Daniele, here we have uh, uh, the chambers. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us uh, how do they work? The work of the chamber is very simple, Franco. Uh, the chamber uh, is a small house. When I put a small pieces of my furniture that I want to test in order to recognize or uh, formaldehyde or volatile organic compounds. We cut uh, small pieces of furniture and we put uh, inside of this chamber uh, small pieces and the sample lasts in this chamber a specific period of time or three days, seven days, till 28 days. After this period of time, we collect by an external pump air inside of this chamber and we determine the concentration in air or for formaldehyde or for volatile organic compounds. And I think that all these parameters, the, the number of days, the, the uh, system to, to sample here, are depending on the different standards. Of course, absolutely, depending on the standard, the shape of the sample, the dimension of the sample, the temperature, the humidity, the time that the sample uh, must uh, be must rest inside of uh, the chamber depend on the stone the stand. And so how many chambers uh, do we have here in Katas? In Katas we have more or less 75 chambers from 1 cubic meter to 0.1 cubic meter and of course uh, the less uh, is the volume of the chamber and less is the is the dimension of the sample that I put inside of this chamber. And uh, uh such chambers are not used only for testing, if I know. Uh, they are also used for other purposes. Can you tell us something about uh, yeah, this? Yeah, of course. We don't use it only for the test, for the normal test, for the laboratory, for the, for the laboratory routine, but uh, we carry out, for example, with this chamber, also the test on behalf of the United States of America in order to release a specific certification about formaldehyde. Since 2011, CATAS has become a third-party certifier from the U.S. authorities. And uh, since this year, we carry out also the test according to the German law in order to release a specific certification for the wood-based panel as well. Daniele, thank you very much for thank this uh, exhaustive explanation of the emissions uh, test carried out here in CATAS. 
but if someone uh, would like to contact you uh, to, to receive more information, yeah. more specific information, uh, I think they can do uh, using especially your email address. So we have completed our visit to the chemical and biological department and now we are going to discover the mechanical and fire departments. Hello, here we are in your department, in the mechanical department, and I see here on uh, your desk uh, many different samples, many different materials, and also different shapes. Can you explain to us uh, what they are? Um, yes, sure. In this department, we carried out uh, tests to determine the mechanical performance of different kinds of materials, uh, such as uh, wood, wood-based panel, like, for example, MDF or particle boards, but also we carried out tests on plastic, rigid plastic, plastic foils or composite materials, but also uh, foams used in uh, upholstery furniture, but uh, we carried out tests also to fabrics or covered materials. And what about the shapes? Why uh, I see different shapes? Uh... Every day we, we break um, different uh, specimens. The shape and dimension of these specimens is very different, but every day we break these samples to determine the maximum force applicable and uh, um, we observe the uh, failure occurs to the samples. And uh, uh, can you uh, give us some examples of the test uh, you, you carried out on, on such materials? Yes, in this case Nicola is carrying out a screw withdrawal test. Uh, this test is necessary to uh, determine the force to remove the screw from the board and we, it is very useful to compare the performance of two, two different boards. But also for companies that uh, want to ensure that uh, the hinges don't detach from the surface of the board is a useful information. For example, in this case, Simone is carrying out a, a test on a foam using a upholstery foam. In this specific case, a compressive test is carried out and we determine uh, the hardness of the foam. This is an important index for the company that produce upholstery furniture, like for example, sofas or office chairs. Yes. And uh, uh, I saw uh, very often another test uh, where you test the, the, the panel, the, the, how do we call it, the three-point ah, okay. bending? Three point, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. The it's, test it's, is called three-point bending. Yeah. And uh, with this test, we determine two important parameters, the stiffness of the board, but also the strength. And these two values are very important for companies that uh, uh, produce shelves for furniture yeah. because uh, with these two values they can uh, design and dimension in a correct way uh, the fin final product but also its uh, fixing systems. These two values are very important also for engineers because uh, uh, use this data to implement the um, database of finite element method programs. Okay. This are um, theoretical calculation techniques uh, used to, for example, simulate a load applied on a finished product and the engineers with these programs determine the stress inside of the sample or the deformation that you obtain with this, this load. But also, it's very useful also for companies that uh, produce finished product because they have the possibility to uh, realize or produce uh, lower quantity of uh, prototypes than in the past. 
So with this uh, rough uh, data and simple data, uh, the engineers can uh, uh, imagine what happened to the finished product. Yes, correct. Yeah. And, uh, and another um, uh, material uh, I think you test are adhesives. Uh, we have seen in the chemical department that our colleagues uh, yeah. analyze their composition for safety reasons, but you do uh, something more, you, you test the, 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 their performance. Yeah, uh, Stefano is performing a, a test on uh, uh, an adhesive. In this specific case, the, the method applied it is EN205. We apply the adhesive on a support standardized and we determine the class of the adhesive. This is a, a very important uh, test for the classification of the adhesives used for non-structural wood applications. So this combination of the different uh, um, soles of katas, uh, uh, finally we can get a complete image of uh, a raw material like an adhesive. Yes. And uh, uh, finally, I think that you don't uh, do only tests, but you are also involved in uh, product certification. Uh, can you tell us something about this activity inside this uh, department? Yes, we have a, a certification for um, scan tricks for windows. Uh, we perform tests in particular to assess the bonding quality of the lamellas. Uh, and we give a certification to the, our customer and then we certify the bonding quality of their products. And this is, I think, uh, uh, fundamental for the end use of such products that uh, are mainly uh, window uh, frames, yes. I think. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And Paolo, um, do we test also uh, this mechanical performance uh, according to uh, the temperature, for example? Yes, sample. Uh, we are equipped with a special uh, device. In this case, Ezio is performing a tensile test at a specific temperature. Uh, we have a, a very special equipment uh, where a climatic chamber and a video extensometer are combined with a dynamometer. And uh, in, with this test, we can determine the mechanical performance of a material at a specific temperature. We can set the temperature of the chamber uh, from uh, minus 70 to 350 degrees Celsius. And this is a very important test because we determine these characteristics, mechanical characteristics of the materials at a specific temperature. Okay, Paolo, uh, I think this is particularly important, especially for plastics or raising material which are sensitive to, 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 to temperature. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your uh, clear explanation. Uh, remember that you can contact directly Paolo for any uh, um, uh, other uh, information about uh, this department. We will stay uh, inside this uh, um, building B uh, because now it's time to visit the fire department. Now we are in the fire department and uh, uh, together with me, uh, we have uh, uh, my colleague, uh, uh, Daniele Barbiero, who is the head of this uh, uh, important department for Katas. Fire is always a big risk for, for uh, domestic furniture, but not, on, not only domestic furniture, for furniture in general. Uh, so uh, which kind of material uh, do you mainly test uh, uh, to, to this uh, fire risk? I think that 90% of our test is on upholstery furniture. And uh, um, which kind of test uh, do you carry out on, on, on such uh, materials? Uh, I have to say that uh, CATAS uh, since uh, 2000 is an authorized uh, laboratory uh, by the Italian Home Office. So we test, we can test, and uh, we can issue certificates that are valid uh, for supplying furniture in those sectors that are under control of the firefighters. And uh, such tests are mandatory for uh, e every uh, environment or they are specifically requested uh, and mandatory for certain? Environments. Uh, these tests are mandatory only for specific premises, such as uh, hotels, uh, 
schools, hospitals, and uh, theater, cinemas. So where, where uh, it's, it's uh, uh, possible that m more people uh, stay inside and so the, the, the risk is, is increased, I think, by the number of persons that can be present in this, in this kind of environment. Yes, it is correct. It is correct in Italy. It is exactly as you say, because in the domestic sector there is no any uh, request because I think it's possible to easily escape if yeah. there is a fire. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, uh, the rest? Uh, you, you, you said before that 90% of our tests are on upholstery furniture. What about the, the rest 10%? Uh, the rest of the tests are on uh, materials and furniture, only for the Italian market, and uh, not upholstery furniture. Uh, that are not under C marking. Okay, and for uh, other countries, do you carry out some tests for uh, European or uh, other uh, countries around the world? Uh, yes, uh, we are equipped to carry out tests according to the British standard for the domestic sector and for the contract sector and also for the California, so we are equipped to carry out tests according to the technical bulletin 117. Daniele, I think that your explanation was uh, fine. Uh, thank you very much and see you next time. You're bye welcome. Bye, Daniele. You're welcome. Thank you. Claudio, why did you ask me to reach you here on the roof of the lab? Hi Franco, it's uh, just to show you a special test. Uh, the test is carried out on the coating for wooden window frame. The test is carried out on this uh, kind of sample. The sample is maintained uh, inclination 45 degrees in south direction and leave it for one year. So it's, it's an another weathering uh, test. and. Uh, uh, at the end of uh, uh, this period, what uh, do you evaluate? At the end of this period, we evaluate uh, uh, the visual aspects, uh, like color, change uh, of gloss and so on, and also mechanical aspects, impact, adhesion test and so on. You mentioned before that uh, uh, the, the duration of the test is one year, so it's a very, very long uh, time to wait for the result. Are there any other methods uh, to accelerate the weathering phenomenon? Yes, of course, it's a very long time, one year. Uh, downstairs we can go to see the, uh, the accelerated test. Okay, let's go to see them. Yeah. So, uh, a few moments ago, uh, we were uh, outside, we were on the roof of this building to see uh, the natural weathering tests. Now we are inside. And Claudio, I know that here you carry out uh, also artificial uh, weathering tests. Uh, what are the advantages of uh, this kind of test compared to the natural weathering? Of course, the, the test is shorter and uh, it can reproduce in the short time what happened in the outside of the building or uh, inside of the building. And which system do you use to, to, to accelerate the, the weathering uh, phenomena? In Katas we have uh, several systems. And the main system is the Xenon arc lamp test that uh, reproduces exactly the solar spectrum. In the defined number of hours we can reproduce, for example, years of natural weathering. And uh, uh, I think that you also use uh, um, another system uh, to reproduce uh, the, the, the different climatic conditions. Yes, there is a, a test called cold check test. Uh, the test is carried out in climatic chamber. The temperature is passed from minus 20 till plus 50 degrees. And uh, at the end of the test, we check uh, 
cracking, deformation, change of color, and so on. Yes, but in the same um, uh, chambers, I think you can reproduce whatever climate you, 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 we want, also controlling uh, not only temperature, but also humidity. Is it right? Yes, of course. Especially when you have a, a, a special condition in transport or in storage, you can reproduce the damp uh, environment uh, with a very high humidity and a high temperature also. So it means that here in the, your laboratory you can reproduce whatever climate, African, uh, yes. very cold, very dry, very, very humid. Dry, yes, of course. Okay, and what, what about metals? Or do you have a special test for metal fittings and, and so on? For metal, we have a, a, a test method, a salt spray test, in which we tend to reproduce the corrosivity environment due to the salt spray fog. And uh, we are checking for rusting, corrosion, and uh, other defects uh, for a metal frame, for example, uh, samples. What, what surprised me about this test is the, the, the speed. So in a few hours uh, uh, you, you can reproduce what happened outside in, in years. Uh, yes, in the short time we can reproduce the age of daily usage, uh, for example, for, for kitchen purpose or office or outside purpose. Yes, and uh, uh, apart from uh, the weathering tests, uh, uh, we do also uh, other kind of uh, tests, in particular in this part of the laboratory where we are. What uh, uh, do we do here? Yes, for example, in this section, we carry out uh, several kinds of tests. The well-known test is called stain resistance. It's based on putting a number of liquids on the surface and uh, after a defined period the, the liquid is, uh, is removed and the test result is rated from 1 to 5 depending on the defect you can find on the final. Uh, yeah. And I, I think that those liquids are not uh, uh, special liquids, are the, the, the liquid we use normally at home. Yes. For example... Yeah. Uh, For example acetone, ammonia, tea, coffee and... Um, and other substances that you common find in the kitchen, for example. And I think the same is for the other test. I know that you do the, the, the resistance to, to heat. Yeah, the test uh, is based on putting the aluminium block up to 180 degrees in the surface and then leave for 20 minutes. And after that is, it is removed. And uh, as before, the test result is assessed according to a rating scale 1 to 5. And this uh, reproduces, for example, a cup of tea or a cup of coffee that yeah. we put on, on uh, our table uh, and, and uh, this can damage, uh, of course, uh, the, uh, the, the surface. Yeah. Uh, but I think that th there are many other tests because we can produce scratches, we can produce uh, uh, other uh, defects. And you uh, reproduce, try to reproduce uh, them uh, uh, every day, I think. Yes, we have several kinds of test devices that can reproduce this type of defects, such as Tabor test, scratching test, the impact test, Martindale test, and so on. And I know that you have also some uh, uh, special instruments uh, to, to, to carry out um, particular measurements. Yes, we have a, a spectrophotometer for the color measurement of the surfaces and a, a, mic a stereo microscope uh, with a, a magnification of 160 times where we can see uh, also very thin layers. And you can measure them, I think. Of course, we can measure them. So, uh, covering material like uh, plastic sheets or whatever, you can, you can directly measure the, the, the thickness. Yes, of course. Okay, Claudio, so uh, thank you very much for your clear explanation of what you do here in the, the surface laboratory. It seems a very wide uh, laboratory with uh, different types of uh, tests. So thank you again and see you later. You're welcome.
Hi, Paolo. Hi, Franco. I think this is a really nice place to see uh, our finished product department. And uh, I must say that when I come here, I'm always fascinated by all this movement, uh, cabinet doors opening and closing, drawers uh, moving back and forward for thousands of times. Can you explain us uh, why we do this test, uh, what we do here in our uh, finished product department? Well, our main uh, activity is uh, performing mechanical tests to access the safety, the stability, the strength and the durability of every kind of furniture as uh, chairs, sofas, tables, cabinets, beds, bunk beds, cots and for every kind of uh, end use as uh, domestic use, contract, office, outdoor and schools. The safety of the products is a very important aspect of our daily job because uh, a product that fulfills the safety requirements of a standard is a safe product on the market. It means that it is a safe product in our houses, our offices, our gardens and our schools. And Paolo, you mentioned uh, different type of products uh, and also different type of uses. Um, so are there um, specific rules uh, to test uh, all these products and uh, according to the different type of uh, end use? Uh, to perform the test uh, we use the standard, national standard or European, American or ISO standards. These are documents, documents with defined test methods and every needed detail as the entity of the load and forces to apply, uh, the loading pads, the loading points, uh, the number of cycles to, uh, to be carried out and the requirements to reach. And uh, uh, for what I know, uh, one of your um, main activity is exactly this, to, to uh, be present uh, to the tables where such standards are defined. And so, um, uh, how do you uh, define a standard? How uh, do you uh, define the, the, the loads, the number of cycles uh, uh, to test the chairs or, or, or the rest you mentioned before? Yes, regarding this, I'm proud to say that uh, many of us are active members in uh, many of the European and ISO working groups of uh, standardization. We think that the knowledge of the standard has a great relevance uh, in order to correctly perform the test. Yes, and uh, uh, the, the, uh, the test itself, uh, I, I think uh, it uh, really reproduces uh, the, the, the normal life. Is it, is it right? Uh, of course, this is uh, the main target of the test. So to reproduce what uh, happens in reality on a specific products. For example, uh, on a seating, the most common uh, test is a seat and back uh, durability. It consists in applying a load to the seat and the force uh, to the backwards and it exactly simulates what happens in reality when a person uh, sits on the chair and leans to the backwards. And, uh all uh, such uh, uh, testing devices uh, uh, we, we can see here, where do they come from? Uh, the testing machines are internally developed by our engineering mm -hmm. team and then produced by a local uh, manufacturer. And uh, uh, do we produce them only for uh, our uh, internal use or is possible also for our clients to buy them, to, to ask uh, uh, to buy them to, to, to you? <laughs> of course, we produce for our use, but also for uh, our manufacturers. Uh, we, the, the request for, uh, for these testing machines is increasing. Uh, the last one we have uh, recently developed is a chair measuring device and uh, Anna Maria will uh, give you now some more details about it. 
Thank you, Paolo. This template is called CMD, Chair Measuring Device, and has been developed into the framework of an ISO, International Standardization Committee. Nowadays, the ISO standard for the measurement of ergonomic dimensions of office chairs is based on the usage of this special equipment. CATAS is one of the first and one of the few producers of this equipment worldwide and that is why we are selling it all over the world. Our engineers design the components, assemble them and calibrate final uh, equipment. As you see, this uh, kind of measurement requires a very special and deep uh, technical knowledge. Nonetheless, there are some issues related to repeatability and reproducibility. That is why CATAS, some years ago, proposed and managed an interlaboratory comparison on this measurement. In this kind of project, the same set of samples is measured by many laboratories and the results of these measurements are statistically analyzed by uh, some statisticians to obtain results about, and information about the uh, trueness and precision of the measurements. Nowadays we develop this field and we have a team of statisticians who carry out and manage proficiency testing schemes, an activity which is quite unique uh, in the European level. Okay, Paolo, and uh, uh, all these devices, uh, how uh, are uh, they uh, controlled and uh, how many people work uh, here in, in this department? In accordance to Industry 4.0, almost all the testing machines you can see through the window are linked in a network and every technician have a remote control on the status of the test by means its own iPad. It means that every technician has an iPad where he can uh, record all the testing data uh, during the test in, in the lab uh, and this avoid any possible uh, mistake during copying of the data and uh, to the use of uh, paper. So uh, this means that all this big laboratory is summarized in a little screen. Yes, exactly. So thank you, Paolo. You're welcome. We have already finished our visit in the finished product department here in San Giovanni Altisone together with Paolo and Anna Maria. And now I'm connected with Alberto uh, because uh, we have another uh, laboratory for the finished product in Lissone. So Alberto, I really don't remember very well when uh, uh, the laboratory in Lissone was opened. Yes, in the 1995, Catas uh, opened this uh, um, center in Lissone in the art of Brianza. The laboratory has a surface of over 1,200 square meters. Um, there are four technicians and uh, we are a branch of the uh, products department. Every year in Catasdissone carry out about 6,000 tests and uh, mainly we carry out uh, safety, strength and uh, durability tests on uh, furniture or other a finished product. And for what I know, uh, you are also specialized in some uh, particular types of uh, tests. Yes, in Lissone we carry out uh, tests on uh, uh, seats, table, uh, bed, sofa bed, hardware for furniture, technical lights for um, persons with disabilities, screens, uh, interior door, internal partition and uh, mattresses. Uh, the test on matrices is a particular activity that uh, we carry out in Lissone. Catas was the first laboratory in uh, Italy to carry out tests uh, to assess the durability of the mattress. Uh, 
Alberto, you mentioned also uh, vertical partitions. Uh, uh, this seems also uh, uh, a speciality for the lab uh, in, uh, in Lisone, isn't it? Yes, another particular activity that uh, we carry out uh, in Lisone concerns the test to assess the resistance and durability of the interior doors or the resistance to damage no load bearing internal partitions. We verify if uh, uh, there are problems regarding the safety of the product. So Alberto, thank you very much for your uh, clear and exhaustive uh, explanation. I think if uh, people would like to know uh, something more about uh, uh, your test, your specific test, uh, they can directly contact you. Thank you and goodbye, Franco. Hi Maurizio. Hi Franco. Here, Maurizio, we are not inside the laboratory, uh, but I know that you uh, can uh, carry out tests uh, inside your uh, computer. Uh, how do you uh, carry out such uh, virtual tests? Uh, yes, Franco, we, we can do some tests without to have a real sample. So uh, we can simulate the test. In this case, I show you a stability test. This is the real stability test, as you have seen on the laboratory. And to perform this kind of uh, uh, simulation, I need a 3D model of a sample to test and the drawing of the loading pad and the mass with the shape and, and weight as the standard. So I put the chair on a virtual, virtual floor, I put the uh, loading pad, the mass, and I can apply an horizontal force and so I can compare this horizontal force with the requirement uh, by the standard. So I can measure this force to see if the, the chair is pass or fail a standard. You can see the measurement of the force and this is a short video of the simulation. Okay. And in this way I can measure uh, this horizontal overbalancing force. Comparizing this with the requirement by the standard, mm -hmm. I can check if uh, the test is fail or not before to have uh, a real sample. So uh, you can check the conformity to a standard uh, during the design of the product. You, you don't have to produce a real one. So I think it's a very useful uh, helping tool for, for the companies uh, during, as you said, during the design of, of the product. Yes. Uh, you, you show us a chair. Uh, are there other uh, examples you can show us? Okay, of course, you can, you can do the same things, for example, for, uh, for a cabinet. In this case, we have a chest of drawer. As for the, for the chair, we have the design of the mass that they use for the real test, and we simply apply the mass on the, on the drawer, and this is the result. The result, is, in this case, is fail. Yeah. But you don't have to produce uh, a new uh, sample. You only have to change the design and repeat the virtual test. So I, I think, Marita, that uh, this kind of service is quite new. Uh, yes, uh, even more customers ask to us this kind of services. And uh, you, you have shown uh, us uh, uh, stability tests. Uh, do you carry out uh, virtually also uh, resistant tests? Yes, we can do also a resistant test. We can uh, check the strength uh, and the deformation of a sample under load, under forces, uh, to simulate the, the real test that uh, we normally do in laboratory. In this example, uh, you can see a sit and back static load test. So I, to set up this test, I have to, to assign the, prop, the material property on every uh, part of the, of the chair and I put the restraint, the load on the seat, the load on the back, and this is the, the simulation result. So in this case, uh, I can compare the maximum strain that I get with the, the value of the material that I have set. So Maurizio, thank you very much for your explanation. I think if uh, um, people is interesting uh, in more details about uh, virtual testing, I think that they, contact, they can contact directly you. Uh, now uh, it's time to, to um, finish our visit to Katas. Uh, the last part was dedicated to an activity that will be surely part of our future. And now it's time 
to go out to meet again uh, Andrea Giavon, the head director of CATAS. So this is the end of our visit to the CATAS laboratories. So we have seen, we have understood what is CATAS today. But now, Andrea, I have a question for you. What will be CATAS tomorrow? What can you say about the future of our laboratory? The future is now, Franco. CATAS has to become more and more competent on all the things that we have seen during the trip. Namely, if we can summarize the future trends of our job, the first is checking and controlling the indoor air quality of our homes, of our uh, offices and so on. The second is to provide services for a furniture which is more and more inclusive in, uh, irrespective of uh, our abilities, of our disabilities. Third is to provide services for uh, furniture which is more and more sustainable, less impacting on the environment and uh, better for our lives. Thank you you all. We hope that you enjoyed the trip inside our lab and we would like to remind you that CATAS is here also to improve the quality of your life inside your houses that we would like to change into your homes. <music>